Hello and welcome. My name is Emma and this week I'm going to be telling you how to stop comparing yourself to other creatives and why you shouldn't really be giving a shit what they're doing. You should mostly be giving a shit about what you yourself are doing. Before I get into this video, I just want to remind you to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you know whenever I'm putting out new content for you to watch and enjoy. Making self-comparisons is something that we all do all of the time. It doesn't matter whether you're doing it professionally or personally, you're probably already doing it. A lot of studies have been coming out about the effect of social media on our self-esteem and our mental health. I've actually researched and written an article on this not long ago with regard to disordered eating and body dysmorphia, but the same kind of thing applies to your professional life as well. You're going through people's LinkedIn feeds, you're seeing Instagram, you're seeing Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, I don't know, I'm not on it, I don't know how it works. I assume it's similar, right? You're seeing a perfectly curated snapshot reel of somebody's best life. You're not seeing the ins and outs, you're not seeing the true them, you're only seeing what they want you to see. So it can be incredibly hard when you're scrolling through post after post after picture after picture of life and career perfection, it's really hard not to use those fake curated standards to measure yourself and your own success and your own self-worth. We all do it. And unfortunately, studies show that women do it more than men, which is really awful, you guys. Same can be said for job pitching as well. You're pitching for a, a project that you really, really want or a client that you want. You know you're up against some competition and you don't get it. The ultimate reaction to that is to think, shit, what did I do? Why am I not good enough? What have they got that I haven't got? What could I have done differently? And I know too many freelancers and freelance creatives that base their own worth on the clients that they can get and the jobs they can get. You're only as good as your last job. And the pressure to keep succeeding is so much that you almost can't enjoy the projects that you get and the success that you get because you're always thinking to the future it's never going to be enough and that's a really sad way to live and it's also not a very fulfilling way to build a career so we need to stop that and this is how we're going to do it so first up i think that you need to realize that our differences are what make us valuable in the industry for example i don't necessarily look like a lot of freelance copywriters. I know a couple of other alternative writers, but me as a human, <laughs> I don't really look like them, I don't really sound like them, and it takes a hell of a lot of balls to go around looking like this to networking events full of corporate clients or small businesses who are looking for a professional writer to join them or that they've got a vision of a business owner in their head or a writer in their head and it's not this. So it takes a hell of a lot of balls to go out there and keep on being genuine and being myself in crowds like that because there's a desperation to fit in and to conform to what they would expect a copywriter to look like but no that's it's you've got to let it go your differences are what make you special and unique clients are aware that there are thousands of freelancers out there they can hire anyone what they really want is somebody that fits with the job or fits with the company and that all comes down to you as you are I get referred for a lot of jobs where people want to sound disruptive or punky or different or a bit edgy and that all comes down to the style of writing that I use on my own website and how I look and how I speak in these videos. People think, you know what, when it comes to being a little bit off the wall, this chick gets it. She knows how to sound like a bit of a nutter or a bit of a badass and those are the jobs that I get typically. They like me as a person. So it's no good me comparing myself to every Tom, Dick and Harry out there because that's not necessarily what the clients are looking for. They come to me because they want different. So continuing to be different is where my strengths are and comparisons are not my friend in that instance. 
It also helps to remember that you don't know the full story. When you're meeting people at networking events and they're giving you the whole spiel about how they started their company and their excellent clients and the amazing way that they like to work, or you're seeing people on LinkedIn, or you're catching their portfolios online and you think, this person is way above me. Just think, you don't know. You don't know how hard they work to get that job. You don't know how long they've been in the industry. You don't actually know whether or not they're any good. You only know what they're telling you. So remember that although it may look amazing, you don't know that person and you don't know that full story. So try to bear that in mind next time you find yourself comparing to somebody else. Using other people's successes to rate your own value is not very healthy, but you can use those amazing successes for your own career goals. So if you saw somebody went out and got a really bitching client and you think, damn, I wish I got that client, think, okay, well, I didn't get that client, but where can I find other clients like this? How can I approach them and pitch myself to them? Maybe that's one of my business goals in the future to get more clients like that. Always try and do it in a way that fits you. Don't try and force yourself into the mould of somebody else's career, somebody else's style, somebody else's life. Do it in your own way and think, how does this work for me? Can I use it as a career goal for myself? Don't be lusting after what they've got. Think about what you have and how this adds to you and your skill set and your career future. So maybe use it and take it and mould it and use it as part of your own journey. Finally, other creatives are not there to be your competition, they're there to be your mate. When I go out networking with other copywriters at Copywriters Unite, I'm not looking at a room full of competition or rivals or people that are better or worse than I am. I'm looking at a room full of friends, you guys. These people are chock full of tips and hints to give you as you are for them. You can muddle through problems together. You can share clients. If somebody's got a really full schedule for the next few weeks and they can't afford to take on another client, who do you think they're gonna to come to? They're gonna to come to somebody that they know, that they've met, that they can vouch for. I get so much work referred to me from other writers that I know from those circles because a job that might not be right for them could be perfect for me and they know me and they'll pass me the work. Similarly, if I've got something that I need to sound off against another writer, I need another professional opinion, those guys are always there. They are rock solid. So instead of viewing them as somebody that you need to beat or isolate, don't share any of your secrets because they might steal it, bro, they're not interested in stealing your secrets. They just want a mate. So try and think about it like that. They're just people. They're not competition. And comparing yourself to them, you're going to lose a lot of potentially amazing friends. So there we have it. That's why you shouldn't be comparing yourself to other creatives and how you can switch off that mindset and catch yourself every time you start doing it. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask me, pop a comment below or find me on Twitter at EJ Cownley and I will happily help you out and answer your questions. Until then, I'll see you back here, same time, same place, next week. Take care.